welcome to episode four of what I'm calling my show and tell. And my name is Claudia. And let's just go ahead and start talking about stuff. I have been having some problems. There's been two major issues since the last time I recorded. <sighs> so yeah. The biggest one is my ankle foot situation on my left leg. Um, I've had problems with it before, uh, but now it's it's really it's really bothering me, and it's been bothering me for a couple of weeks now. I was at my dad's helping him clean out the garage, and instead of wearing you know appropriate shoes like you know you should, I was wearing um, I was just wearing like my Converse. And they're not exactly the best for standing on concrete for hours. So by the time I got to the car, which was in the driveway, um, but like when I sat down, my, like I realized that, you know, my feet were sore, which makes sense. Like that's to be expected. But my ankle on my left leg, it was, I don't know. I kind of knew I was like, I think I, I think I might have overdid it just a little bit um and I did and it, it all stems back from like an incident that happened when I was in college I fell and I landed on like I twisted my ankle and to be perfectly frank I'm not sure I didn't break it I mean something bad happened it swelled up huge it was an I was horrible pain and it was like that forever and like a big dummy I never went to the doctor I mean I didn't have health insurance. This was before the age where, like, you can stay on your parents' health insurance until you're 26. I, you know, I didn't have any insurance in the school um, health services or whatever they called it. They, you know, they can't. I knew that I would end up having to go to the hospital. So um, I just didn't. I just didn't want that expense. And quite frankly, I, it was finals week and I just didn't have the time because I think I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that I was coming back from a final when it happened and I think I had another one that later that day and I had just I didn't have time so I persevered even though it was horribly painful it took me forever I had to bum rides from people um, yeah I lived on campus in college but my dorm was actually about a mile from the building that I used most often for my um, degree. They tend to have kept like most of like, so like for instance, most of the science classes were all in one building. Most of the literary, like English language, all of that stuff was all in one building. Business was all in one building. And I have a business degree. So I was like all in, I was usually in this one building. And by the time that this happened, um, I was, almost exclusively in that building. So, you know, I was making that trek. It was not a big deal, except that, you know, this particular time I was walking downhill, it was winter, um, so it was fall, it was fall semester. And so I, I don't know, it was slick and I just fell. <sighs> yeah. Long story short, I still have problems today. <laughs> um, if you look at my ankles, you can tell, like my, my left ankle is, wide it's bigger than my right ankle like in one spot so I'm pretty sure that like whatever is in there is messed up like I don't know if it's tendons or the bone itself I I don't know but there's something going on with it I need to go to the doctor and have them look at it and see if there's anything they can do most of the time it doesn't bother me because I'm really good about wearing supportive shoes except when I'm you know helping my dad at the garage and apparently I just, I don't know, I just decided it would be fun to, I don't know, not wear some athletic shoes or something. <laughs> so that's been bothering me. It's been making life not fun. Um, I have not been able to really do a lot, go a lot of places. I had to go to the store yesterday and yeah, like after the fact, I was pretty much like laid up. Like I, my, it was it hurt so bad to stand um, and to put any weight on that ankle. It was just, it was just a mess. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And yeah, so, uh, I don't know. So that's been a big deal, big bummer. And then to top it all off, it's been like invasion of the spiders. 
I hate spiders. I mean, I just, like, I do. I hate them. I hate insects. I hate bugs. Just anything that's creepy and crawly, I don't want near me in my house or anything. Unfortunately, you know, we can't just, like, up and move since we own the house. Um, <laughs> so we have to deal with it. And we were going to deal with it yesterday, but I was in no way able to help with anything. So we didn't really do much in the way of, you know, trying to like bug spray everything. We, I have this like, it's supposed to be like natural bug spray. It's made with like, like lemon seed oil or something like that. Um, some kind of, some kind of, it's got like essential oils in it or something. And it's supposed to be safe around, you know, your pets and children and stuff. And, um, so that way the cats hopefully, like once I think it, once it dries, like it's fine. And as long as you don't get it in your eye or eat it or whatever. So, yeah. Basically there's, I think, to be honest, I think it's coming from a specific closet. Um, when the, when we bought the house, we had to have the cable lines rerun because the people who owned the house had put satellite in, um, except that instead of leaving the lines the way they were, they cut the old lines. And so when we bought the house, we didn't realize that because for some reason it just never was not, wasn't on the inspection or something. And so when we went to try to get the internet hooked up, we didn't have the lines. <laughs> so we had to have someone come out and they relined the house. And I know that they had to drill a hole that goes into that closet. And I just wonder if maybe like the seal has broken. It's It's been, you know, we've had the house for a few years. So I think that I just need to go in there and check and make sure like nothing is coming in right there. But I've seen two right over there. And the cats are really good about alerting us, which is awesome. But that still doesn't make me feel any better <laughs> about the fact that they're in my house. So we're going to um, spray the exterior of the house again. We do that a couple of times a year. And then... Um, and then do the interior, which we have not done for many, many years. When we first bought the house, it had been empty for, you know, over a year, I think. So there were, you know, critters, well, not critters, but crawlies, creepy crawlies. Um, there weren't any, like, rodents or anything, but there were, you know, spiders and um, just general bugs that had gotten in. And, you know, we removed the car, we removed the carpet and everything. We put down to all new floors. So we were able to kind of seal everything and make sure it was all shored up, but still bugs. Gross. Um, they're not like huge, thankfully, but they look huge when you see them coming at you. They're not really coming at you, but I feel like they're trying to murder me. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the crafty goodness. Um, Okay, I'm sorry, I was just looking. So, finished objects. Uh, I'll talk about my socks first. I finished my socks. These are the Hermione's Everyday Sock by someone. Erica uh, Luter. Or is it Letter? I don't know. Oh, I guess I don't really need the needles. Uh, I'm using the yarn I'm using is Lion Brand Sockies, and the colorway is Rock Candy. I just realized you can see my mess back there. Sorry about that. And there is hair on them. I don't own sock blockers. I've been looking at some, but my feet sort of fall in between sizes. Um, the the two pairs I've been looking, or the two sets of sock blockers that I've been looking at most exclusively, they go like the the size gauge on them is you know um, up to like a six. I don't, know, I don't know what that is. Um, it's up to like, it'll be like but whatever it is between a four and a six. And then it'll start like a seven to a nine. Well, I wear a six and a half. <laughs> so I kind of fall in between. So I guess I'll probably err on the side of caution and go a little smaller. Um, because I figure they'll probably stretch anyway. Okay. So here you go. These are ankle socks, so they basically, you know, you can see, like, here's the heel, and then it's basically, I think I did, like, two or three repeats. Um, it's a four-stitch or four-row repeat, and then the cuff. 
Now, there are some serious mistakes. Not so serious that like they're unusable, but noticeable to me. Can you see? <laughs> on one sock, the first sock I did, it was I did one by one ribbing, and on the second one, I did two by two ribbing. <laughs> I just wasn't paying attention. And yeah. Uh, on the first sock, I also messed up on the um so can you see the difference? You can't really tell. Well, yeah, you sort of can. Basically, um, I missed a row where you were supposed to slip the stitches. I just didn't slip them. And it um, ended up making like vertical um, bars kind of. I mean, not really vertical bars, but sort of. It's fine. And I did it correctly on the second one. Um, I really like this pattern. Oh, I also missed, um, I need to get the camera, but I missed a, um, texture row. And so that where, it, where it actually bends, you know, like when you're on your foot, it doesn't have texture there, but you can't see it because my foot spins. I, they fit great. Um, the second one fit slightly different and I think it I think it's a gauge issue. I think that's what it is. If I look at the um the difference or if I look at it, I think I was slightly at a slightly tighter gauge, which is you know, not um unexpected, but it is what happened. They still fit and everything. It's just it's it's just a little tighter but that again, that's also um on my left foot and ankle so of course you know issues but I don't think that it'll be you know there's some give I don't think it's going to be an issue but yay I really like I haven't wore them or anything I haven't washed them blocked them nothing but I wanted to show them to you so you can see like this one actually looks a little bigger I think but this is the one that like I tried on and walked around the house in <laughs> to make sure I like the way it fit it was the first one I did so I was sort of showing it off <laughs> to my husband. I was like, look what I did. Um, I'm getting much, much better at kitchenering, which is when um, you won't be able to see it, of course, but it's basically when you join the two sides together so it looks as if like the stitch is continuous so you don't have a seam. Um, I'm getting much better at it, which is good because it was pretty, I was pretty bad at it before. I mean, I had never, um, when I've done kitchen ring before, it's always been on thicker yarn. So I think that made it a little, like, it was easier for me to not, like, to not notice the gaps, I guess. And I mean, I was better at, of course, pulling it. There was less you had to do and everything. So, uh, I don't know. With the tiny, tiny yarn, it's just, it's just harder, I think. Also, it's, like, harder to see. So... These are my socks. I'm excited. Oh, okay. Um, I only finished one other thing and it is like so tiny. I don't even know if I should show it to you, but I'm going to because I need something to show you. Um, I finished a, I told you all about the yarn, right? Okay. I finished a, um, I guess the granny's or grandmother's favorite dishcloth pattern. My needle's back in the bag. Sorry about that. Um, I finished the, my needles are trying to get away. Okay, seriously. Stop. All right. <laughs> I finished a, a grandmother's favorite dishcloth. Um, one side, I'm trying to make sure I'm not showing you the side that I wove the ends on and on. Okay. Um, there you go. I am using um, Lily Sugar and Cream Stripes, and the colorway is Country Stripes. I am not sure that this reads to me as country, but it's fine. It has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has like a really pretty blue and sort of this more limey green. It's a little bit more um, lime in person. Um, a more teal color and then this more aqua 
blue kind of color. And you can see it's not a perfect square. You know, um, it's a little bit a little bit off, but it's fine. Um, it's nice. And I just, I've got a little bit of cotton. I don't have, you know, a ton of it. I have more than like I probably need um, of kitchen cotton, like this type of cotton. I have, um, you know, one of those like photo storage box things. I've got one of those full. So there's probably like 10 skeins. I don't know. I have no idea how many I have. But I'm trying to work through it. I figured after everything, I sort of just needed something that was more simplistic. Um, I do modify the, I guess, traditional pattern. Um, I do, uh, I slip the first stitch with the yarn in front and it creates this nice um, edge to it. So that way I just think it looks better. And then on the decreases, I um, slip the first stitch, knit two together. Is that right? Yes. I slip the first stitch, knit two together, yarn over, and then I slip, slip, knit, slip, slip, knit. So I do an SSK. And I um, slip the first one knit-wise, second one purl-wise, and, um, and then knit them together. And I think it makes the holes... Um, a little bit more uniform. You can see that these, this is the decrease uh, part right here, and this is the um, increase side. So you can see that these are still a little bigger, but they're not nearly as like gappy as they are, at least for me and my particular set of tension loveliness. I knit these on size 7, 4.5 millimeter. Oh, I forgot to mention, I mean, I did those um, socks on 2.25 millimeter size ones, I believe. Pretty sure. They might have been 2.5. They're size ones. But anyway, um, so you can't see. I'll talk about my camera in a minute. But yeah, so I just use these. These are, I think, 10 inch straights. I don't always use straight needles. Um, I don't often use straight needles anymore, but I like them for doing the dishcloths. I don't know why, but I just, I do. So if I'm not like taking them away with me, I'll do them on these straight needles. Um, and I will, I have an honorable mention for finished objects. I just decided to call this one finished. It had been in my whips category or my whip category on Ravelry um, for quite a while. Can you hear that? I'm sorry. It feels like my house is vibrating because my neighbor just pulled his car up and it's kind of loud. Um, but anyway, so I had this sitting in, or not sitting in there, but I had it in my whips and it was in a project bag and everything. And um, my husband had wanted the neck to be a little bit longer and I was going to do it and then I just decided to call it finished. So this is the helmet liner pattern by Bonnie Long. And you, okay. <laughs> Trying to see. Okay, there we go. So it looks like it's got a mouth. Um, I'm not going to try it on. There will be a picture up on... Um, my project page for it by the time this airs, hopefully. I've taken the picture. Um, I just have to get on there. Um, there is a picture on Instagram, though, of my husband wearing it. I'm pretty sure I was finished by then. But I just, um, I took a picture on my little mannequin head thingy. <sighs> yeah, it's a really nice, the pattern is quite simple. Um, the only thing I would change next time is I would do the decreases. Someone mentioned it in one of their um, project things, um, their notes, that they decreased here at the corner. So that way when it's on, it doesn't gap. It does gap just a little bit, but I figure I can tack it down. Um, it's not too bad, but I like it. But I just want to have an honorable mention for this because it's been completed for a long time, but um, I was just not sure if I was going to pick up and do an extra inch on the 
neck. Um, the reason my husband requested it to be slightly longer is because when he raised his head up, it gapped like right at like the base of his neck. And I'm, you know, that is a concern. I mean, I'm not trying to like say that what he feels is not accurate, but um, he always wears a scarf. So I'm like, it's not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see it. So it's fine. Um, <laughs> he, I made this so when he's out shoveling the driveway, because he's awesome and he, and he shovels the driveway, um, that this way he won't freeze. Now this yarn, I used Lion Brand, Lion Brand Lion's Pride Wool Spun. I thought I could remember it. Um, and the color was evergreen. This yarn is actually quite lovely. I think I bought this at Michael's. Pretty sure it was at Michael's. Yeah, it was Michael's. And they had it like on an end cap thing by the yarn. And I, um, I picked up two, two skeins and because I was, I thought about making like a, um, a hat and mitten set or something like that for him, but he really wanted this and um, so I made it. He didn't actually specifically request this, but I know like it was really cold this winter and he was freezing. I might actually make one for myself um, to keep like, you know, in case of emergencies or like if it's really cold and I have to go outside. Um, it's nice because you can pull it like, you know, wherever you need to. All right. That is all for finished goodness. For my whips, <laughs> for my whips, I am, I have another dishcloth started. This is just tiny. Um, this is the yarn, by the way. I've just got it laying here on the floor. Or the floor. The desk. You know, you can see it's, I've got quite a bit left, so I'll be able to get a pretty decent size washcloth. Um, I do this up to 40. I usually do them up to 40 because that for me, like that fits my hand pretty well, you know. Um, but I also, you know, I always, I usually end up with a little extra yarn too, so it's fine. Oh, and I do do, just in case, I find that this pattern, um, if you work it without doing any straight rows in the middle, it curls. I've got a few that I did first without before I started modifying it, this curls, like it'll curl in a little. Well, to combat that, what I do is once I get to the number of rows that I want to do, I work even so I don't increase or decrease. And um, I do, I drop the yarn overs from the previous row. So that way the um, hole remains except on this one side for some reason. I think I might have been a little too loose um, with holding the yarn because like it doesn't have a gap. It needs to be like a gap right here and it's just not there. So I mean it's there but it's just not very big and I think that the yarn is a little loose but whatever. It's a washcloth. It'll be fine. These I'm making for to like to use like on my face and stuff like that, as opposed to um, I've made some for the kitchen. I don't mind. This is not that rough to me, um, and I have kind of sensitive skin, so I have to be careful with stuff. But this does not feel rough. You know, it's actually it's nice. All right, so I showed you the dishcloth, and then the other thing that I'm working on is the Angel Four or Angel Wings Pinafore. And it is by Maxine Gonzer from Bev's Country Cottage. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's adorable. I have made one of these before. Um it's in one of my finished objects videos, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> um before I started doing these more um, formatted videos. I'm sorry about that noise. Like that's really annoying. I hope you can't hear it too much, but I think you can because it's vi it's making the picture on my wall vibrate. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, this is what I've got so far. Can't really see what I'm showing you. Um, the yarn is Snuggly Wuggly by Lion Brand, or no, I'm sorry, 
by Loops and Threads, which is the Michaels brands. Um, the color is Peppermint Twist, which is um, it's a pink and white marled yarn. I was not sure how I felt about this. Once I was like, I was just working on the yoke and, you know, the part that goes right through here. And I wasn't sure, just wasn't sure how I felt about it. But I, you know, I like it now, but it's, I've got more of it. So, um, yeah. I'm making this for my husband's boss's wife. They're, his husband and his wife are having a baby. And um, she's due, like, I mean, t like, tomorrow. <laughs> um, like, there's a possibility she could, that she might go into labor tomorrow. But if not, I think it's Thursday. They're going to induce her if she's not naturally went into labor. Because um, I think she's past due at this point. I'm not sure. To be honest, I don't actually know her. I am doing this for his boss, who I don't know either. But it's just... I don't know. I feel like I have to. So that's not true. I don't feel like I have to. I just, you know, I mean, it's his boss. He likes his boss. It seems appropriate. So I'm making this for them. They had already taken like a collection or whatever for a gift card. So I don't think it's, you know, if I don't get it done or I end up not liking it when it's done, it's fine. So I am modifying the pattern then. So once I got done with the first four rows, I joined in the round, whereas the pattern does not call you free to do that. You generally work it flat. Um, and then it doesn't get seamed. You just put buttons and you're done. But someone, I think it's like the second person on the, the most helpful list, uh, sort of gave their instructions to joining in the round. And I um, kind of followed that. So it'll be really cute, I think. And I figure since it's for a newborn, um, it's probably better to not have those flats. I feel like they they might just get in the way. And also, I didn't necessarily want the closures to be so required. You know what I mean? Like, so, so it stays on. It will have a button in the back um, eventually. And, uh, and then I'm going to do something decorative on the front. I don't know about buttons. I mean, the baby is not going to be like old enough to be chewing on stuff. I don't think yet, but you know, better safe than sorry. I thought I might, um, put like a ribbon on there and that way they can take a picture with the ribbon on and then take the ribbon off if they wanted to, or they might like it without the ribbon. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still, I still have some doubts about the yarn. I'll be honest. I still have, I like it better, but I'm still not, I don't know. Like, I kind of wonder if maybe I should have went with a solid color. I do have um, more baby appropriate yarns, like softer yarns, that I could do it, um, do another one. And it's, it's not a very long project. I've been working on it for, this is the third day. I'll have it finished today. I could have had it finished in one day. Um, I just didn't finish it. I stopped working on it. Um, and then picked it up a little last night and did a couple rows. So, yeah. I think it's so cute. Like, it's baby clothes are the best. Like, they're so tiny. I mean, look at it. Like, look at this. It's so tiny. I need to get a little baby, like, hanger. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to have a ton of yarn left. Like this is a, this is a big skein. Um, I, I do wonder if maybe this yarn would have been better, um, suited for a blanket. It's not the soft, it's not rough, but it's not the softest, um, acrylic that I've ever used. And I'm thinking when it'll blot, when I wash it, it'll, um, it'll soften up quite a bit. But if it doesn't, then I'll have to remake it because it's, I, it's not going to be right on the baby's skin, I'm sure. Like, they'll probably put it over a, um, like a onesie or something like that. But, you know, just, I think it's cute to dress up a onesie, honestly. Now, the one I made for my, um, for my niece, my niece was older, so I ended up using, um, a bigger, like a thicker yarn. This is DK weight, I think. Yeah. And I used a thicker yarn and, um, a larger hook. I'm using a size H hook, which is a five, yes, a five millimeter, um, to go with the yarn, and you know it's working out. It's working out nice. 
in the fabric. It's not too thick or anything. So, but my gauge is a little, I, I notice I'm crocheting just slightly tighter than I usually do. Um, I've been a little tense with the whole ankle foot situation. All right. Um, is that everything? Oh, um, the other thing that I've been working on, which I'm not going to show you, is the spinning that I showed you last week. I have, I think, two row logs left to go. I'm just going to show you when that's done. Um, I might show it to you once before I apply it, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. It depends, like, how early in the week or whatever that I get it, that I get it finished. Because I might just want to go ahead and put it all together. Uh, let's see. I did not buy anything this week. I'm just making sure. Yes. <laughs> I have been writing stuff down, so, like, I've got notes. Um, I did not buy anything, but I was very, very tempted. Joann's had, um, I got, like, the, like, the ad they mail you or whatever. It had a note that if you spent, like, $50 that you'd get a coupon for 30% off your entire purchase you know, in like a week or something like that. And, or, you know, that was good after you bought the original stuff. But I didn't really need $50 for the stuff from Joann's. I've not been buying a lot of yarn, um, and I don't have any projects that I need any of that yarn for. And there are a couple things that I needed, but I haven't bought them. I've, I've been trying to make a, um, more stitch markers, and quite frankly, I tried my hand at the snagless ones, like the ones where you use um, like jump rings and the beads and stuff. And I have made them before and they, they were fine. Like they're good, perfectly usable, awesome. But this time I used, I don't know, like I just lost my mind and I ended up gluing my fingers together. <laughs> I mean, I caught it soon enough to where like it didn't pull skin off or anything. But, you know, I was just being a little, I don't know. It's been one of those times where, you know, just whatever. <laughs> it's probably not best for me to do that. But, and the reason I try to do those is because I was out of something. No, I can't even remember what now. I was out of something that I, you, that I was using for my regular stitch markers that I like to make. I was just out of it. So I gave this a try. Oh, it's the little, like, um the little covers that you put on top of the, the ones you squish. I'm not a jewelry maker, so I don't know the technical terms for those things. I just know that what they do. But I was out of them, and um, so I was like, well, I'll make this other kind instead. And, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, the giveaway, um, the winner, Tony, she contacted me, and I skeined up the yarn, or skeined up the yarn. I wound the yarn for her. And it's in this Ikea <laughs> zippy bag. But um, I will be mailing that out to you. I just have to get a box appropriate. For some reason in my mind, like, I didn't pre-plan for that. Even though, like, I knew there was a possibility that I probably would have to, like, you know, wind it up where someone might want me to. Um, and so in my mind, I only had packing stuff. I thought I had all the packing stuff, but it was only appropriate for if I sent so, sent the whole hang. Like, I sent it as a hang. Whatever. So I'm just going to go get a box um, from the post office <laughs> next time I go. Um, I probably have to have my husband go with me because of my ankle. So, yeah. But not a big deal. Um... Since I've been, like, laid up and, like, had to like, keep my foot propped up and everything, I have been watching things and planning stuff in my head. Um, I kind of want to start all of the things, and that's kind of a problem because when I get to that point, like, where I have that urge to start everything, sometimes it makes me be able to do, like, I don't start anything. Like, I'll just kind of shut down until I figure out what it is I want to do. I kind of want to make another one of these, which is um, a mama vertebrae. I really like it. I've been wearing it often this um, early part of the summer, which has been incredibly hot, by the way. But I've been wearing it. I want to make another one. Um, I have plenty of yarn and everything. And so I'll probably start that. And then there's another cardigan I want to start. And, I mean, there's just stuff. I've got so much stuff. 
that I want to do. I've got uh, my niece's birthday is in a couple of months, so it's in it's in September, and I want to make her something for her birthday. I made her the Happy Potamus, the um, African Violet Hippopotamus. I made that for her birthday last year. It was a big hit. I don't know how I'm going to top it. I don't think I'm going to try. So I think what I might do is um, just do something different, like a um, like a knitted monster. I've got the uh, Rebecca Danger, the Big Book of Monsters. I've got that, uh, or Big Book of Knitted Monsters, I think that's what it's called. Um, I've got that book, and I've got the one where it's like 50 yards of fun, but I think I want a bigger item. And I've got yarn, I think, that would work for it, that I've, I bought thinking, oh, that would make a good monster. <sighs> so we'll see. Um, yeah, but anyway, so I've been watching a lot of stuff, and we went to the movies, which that, of course, you know, was not at home, but we went to the movies, and we watched Spy, the new Melissa McCarthy movie. Okay, I, I'm going to try to say this without spoilers, because if you've not seen it, I mean, it's, go see it. If you enjoy, um, her or even if you enjoy like spy type movies like Mission Impossible or James Bond, things like that, I think that you might enjoy this because going in I thought, oh, this is going to be more like a parody. Like this is just going to be a bunch, like everybody's just making fun of like that's that genre of movie. And surprisingly it wasn't. So like I didn't realize that going in. It was, they took some of it a little bit more seriously. It was still funny, of course, but that that whole plot line they took they weren't trying to make fun of it, I guess. So I thought that they did a really good job. Jason Statham is in that movie, and normally, you know, he plays like an action hero, I guess. And um he's he was really, really, really funny. Like, I mean, you didn't really, when you think of him, you don't think he's, like, humorous or a comedian or anything like that. But he was really funny. He was really funny. Um, you need to, if you go watch it in the theaters, you have to stay till after the credits. You have to stay. People are, like, movies are doing that a lot now, but you have to stay till after the credits because you have to. You just have to. It's worth it. It's worth the extra, like, four minutes you have to sit there. While I have been home, we went and saw that like when it opened. So that was like two Fridays ago or something like that. It's been a couple weeks. Um, but when uh, when I've been at home, I've been watching Orange is the New Black. The new season was released the other day. I don't remember what it was. But um, I, I went, uh, went ahead and started watching that this weekend. And I'm on, I finished season, or I finished episode 10, so I've got three episodes to go, and my husband and I are watching it together, so I won't start that until um, he gets home. I don't know if we'll finish it today. Probably not. But um, it's, yeah. Episode 10, oh my gosh. Again, no spoilers, but... Okay. Uh, the season is good. If you like the, if you like the show, you'll, I think you'll really like the season. Um, the, I don't know, like this one, it, it feels a little different. It feels different. The tone of it's slightly different, but I think the tone of it is more what prison would actually be like. It's a little darker, I think. Um, and you know, there's power struggles and stuff, but yeah, it's, it's good. And I recommend it. All right, I have been talking for almost 40 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and go, and I will talk to you all later. Bye. Oh, let me know if you have any questions or anything. Bye.